there's the squad. You're not the squad. <laughs> What the hell do you want? I'm here on behalf of the fans, and you're out of bullets. So go ahead and reload, and I hope you're in better shape when we meet again. Greetings, fanboys and fangirls. I'm Erod, and I'm the Blockbuster Buster Suicide Squad, a comic book series solely focusing on the villains, making it a standout series in the otherwise wholesome and idealistic DC universe. A big budget Suicide Squad movie was inevitable, but for that movie to work, they had to honor the source material, as well as the great obscure characters that were there from the comic's inception, as opposed to putting unnecessary focus on more popular characters like... <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta go punch the clown. Blah, blah, blah. All this chit chat is gonna get you hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got that backwards, Chief. Oh, don't worry. I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you real bad. In fact, you might even say you're about to have a very bad day. Watch it, pretty boy, or I'm gonna. You're gonna do what? Threaten me again and again and never follow through with the threat? You're gonna do nothing. And you wanna know why? Your empty cartoony threats are about as full of holes as the plot of this movie. You keep saying you're gonna do terrible things, but we never actually see you do them. You're about as threatening as a hamster, but even a hamster can give you rabies. And then there's the other thing. Would you die for me? Since when does the Joker give a shit about Harley Quinn? Their relationship has one characteristic. She's madly in love with him, and he's an abusive piece of crap who's only nice to her when he needs something from her. Otherwise, she's dead weight. So all these pseudo-romantic scenes between the two of them are complete bull. <sighs> Which brings me to the most annoying fact of all. The Joker's presence in this movie is completely pointless. He serves no purpose in the narrative. He's literally in this movie because he's a popular character and the studio knows that gullible fans are more likely to check out the movie if he's in it. Hey you, do your stupid Home Alone face. And you, I'm not sure why you got an origin scene in a movie with an ensemble cast, but I'll get back to you in a minute. Why does this character need more backstory than the others? Hell, some of the characters in this movie get no development at all. I mean, what was the point of these people? There was no happy medium. Either the characters were too fleshed out or not fleshed out at all. Hey, cowboy, who are you trying to shoot here? A mob informant. Oh, for God's sake. DC Comics spends the last 20 plus years trying to craft this character into a complex villain with a lax moral code. And now the makers of this movie are trying to turn him into an anti-hero? The name's Harley Quinn. Pleased to meet you. No, you're not! 
Dr. Harleen Quinzel, aka Harley Quinn, created in 1992 by animation legend Paul Dini, exclusively for Batman the Animated Series, a psychiatrist turned serial killer whose unhealthy obsession with the Joker turned into romantic interest. And I don't know who you're trying to play here, sweetie, but it ain't that it. Why are you dressed like a Hooters waitress? What part of a t-shirt and booty shorts says clown or Harley Quinn? Well, my costume Wait, actually- I got a better one for you. What is your function within this team? What is it that you do for the Suicide Squad? What amazing skill do you bring to the table? Nothing! Absolutely nothing. Everybody else has a superpower or some kind of amazing ability. You have a gun, a bat, and lame jokes. So again, I ask, why are you here? Because Warner Brothers knows that I sell a lot of merchandise. Exactly. So get out! Well, my character provides a lot for the Suicide Squad, you know that, right? Superheroes. I mean, this movie forcefully establishes that both Batman and The Flash exist in this universe. And you're casting a big fat spotlight on the very spot where you're destroying the world. And yet the superheroes are nowhere to be seen. Instead, a bunch of bad guys show up to stop you with zero motivation to do so. Which brings me to this movie's greatest irony. A film that focuses solely on the bad guys has one of the worst, most forgettable and one-dimensional characters of all time as the villain. And we arrive at this movie's greatest plot hole. Earlier, Amanda Waller killed you by stabbing you in the heart. And the only way you stayed alive was by having your brother give you part of his life force. Yeah, yeah so... So, about a minute ago, El Diablo killed your brother, which means the spell should be broken. Which means you should be dead. <sighs> Hey, fellas, catch! Well, I guess the only thing left to say is, this movie sucks. Stick to Marvel. So that was one busted, thousands more to go. I'm Erod, not the blockbuster buster.